Welcome everyone. This is our, um, our latest webinar. Um, we are going to introduce you to Jomni Digimap and we're very pleased to welcome Anthony Mills and Beverly Tyrrell from Jomni who are going to talk us through the data and give us all the, uh, the details. We are going to look here at uh, the Jomni Digimap uh, collection as I said. Uh, Beverly and Anthony both work for Jomni. Um, when we go through this we'll have a question and answer session afterwards. If we have time my colleague Viv will do a demonstration of both the Roam and the data download clients afterwards. And again, we'll have more time for questions after that. If we don't have time for the demo, um, we will make sure there is some sort of video alternative available so that you can work your way through uh, the, the Roam and data download clients yourselves. We are of course, always available on email to answer any questions at any time. Um, Edina, at ed.ac.uk is our email address. You can reach us there. So please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Um, I think that's all I needed to say. Oh, I forgot to say my name's Emma and I work for Adina. <laughs> um, chances are any um, uh, questions will come to me at, at first point. Um, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I'm very pleased to hand over then to Anthony and Beverly who will now, I think we're going to do a share screen changeover and um, Beverly and Anthony will take over. Take it away. Okay. So hopefully you can see the first slide of my screen now. Yeah, that's good, Beverly. Good. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you for joining us. Uh, today we'll be focusing, uh, as Emma said, on the Johnny UK products that are available from the Digimap portal. I'm joined by my colleague Anthony. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll be uh, doing part of the presentation with Beverly today. Thank you. And over the next 20 or so minutes, we'll run through the products and their unique features and some of the applications that have utilised them. So uh, first of all, just a quick slide on, on who, who are Jomini. Um, we were founded uh, 23 years ago a uh, small company uh, based near Cambridge. And then in recent years, we became part of a very large uh, multinational company called Verisk, who specialise in solutions for insurance, energy and uh, financial services industries. So what are the joining products that are available? Um, we have UK Map, which is a comprehensive view of the Greater London area, and that's actually out to the M25. Uh, and it includes detailed building footprints and features, as well as building heights, um, points of interest, land use and land cover. Um, following on from that, we have UK Buildings. And you can see the map here, which shows the distribution of uh, buildings across the, the country. And this is our national database of um, building characteristics and form. And then finally, UK Land, um, which is our national database, uh, which includes 27 land use classes and uh, details both rural and urban classifications. Um, with all three of these products, we publish two editions uh, each year, and they will be available via the Digimap portal shortly afterwards. And um, the portal uh, enables users to access this data um, to, to the institutions who have signed up, then you can get access, and you can use them in the Roam um, just as a backdrop, or you can download the data for further analysis. And uh, I believe that if we have time, then hopefully they can show you a bit about that as well. But um, they also have a great resource on the YouTube channel too. Yeah, so uh, outside of uh, academia, our customers you know, come from a wide variety of backgrounds, from insurance uh, through to government, utilities or consultancies, and, and even some uh, national mapping agencies. You know, our geospatial data is a com key component of what, what in a wide range, range of industries uh, and applications uh, within, uh, uh, within those industries. And so with the wealth of data that's already on the Digimap portal, why would you use the Jomni products? Um, it, it's true to say that as we collect the data, it is a unique source, but more than that, it's worth noting that the data um, as you'll see, it has been used to provide context and enables uh, detailed analysis for a, a wide range of um, 
projects. And actually one of the reasons that Verisk acquired us was because of the unique building age and uh, building use information that we have available. This information um, actually feeds into their um, insurance, uh, into their risk analysis of buildings to help understand the potential risks and as well as rebuild costs after a disaster or an emergency. Um, government have used our data for developing their local plans, um, for social distancing, um, and even emergency planning, whilst the telecoms have used it for planning the 3, 4, and now the 5G network. Um, utility companies use the age of buildings uh, to help schedule maintenance and replacements of their pipe work, and consultancies work on a variety of projects ranging from major planning um, schemes that run across multiple counties um, and down to concentrating on uh, very small scale sites. And mapping companies use our data to help update their maps, but also provide additional data to their end users. In the following slides, um, Anthony and I will talk about the features of each database and also go through some of the projects that uh, we've been lucky enough to be involved with. So uh, UK map, it, it's essentially a, a seamless spatial database covering the Greater London area or the M25 area. Uh, although in the image here and in the name imply that, that it's a map, that really doesn't do it justice. It's, it's a much, much richer uh, database much, much richer database uh, than um, just a mapping background. Uh, we can create, uh, uh, we have information down to the individual floors of buildings in, in some circumstances. So if, if a building is a retail unit on the ground floor with two floors of offices above and a floor of uh, residential above that, we capture all of that level of information and, and make that available to, to our customers. Uh, and, and the UK map classification includes both land use and land cover. Uh, so land cover might be, uh, say something's a man-made surface, you know, it's uh, asphalt or concrete or something like that. But the use might be retail car park. So you can identify where the you know, um, car parks are uh, and during early parts of uh, lockdown a year a year ago now you were trying to identify potential sites for for driving testing centers you know lots of the retail parks were closed but their car parks offered you know um, or business parks were closed their, their car parks offered facilities you know for, for testing centers so so it didn't help to know that it was a man-made surface and land cover but it did help to know its use in terms of its uh, uh, retail car park in addition to the detailed spatial database element of the data, uh, there's uh, aerial imagery, uh, digital terrain and surface models, and uh, address layer. So we capture addresses as well for that uh, M25, uh, M25 region. So um, how has this data been utilised? Um, one issue that was recently highlighted again by the COVID-19 pandemic was the need um, for planning social distancing measures. And so to maintain social distancing in public, many London authorities were reviewing the width of their pavements um, in the area and identifying those that were around two or three metres or less so they could put in a variety of different measures. So things like pavement widening or introducing one-way systems or even closing um, pavements down entirely. This detailed view that you can see here is uh, in central London and uh, we have uh, pulled out the pavements from UK map and put the aerial photography behind and then color coded them depending on their minimum width. So um, you can see here red is less than two meters yellow is two to three, and then green is greater than three metres. Yeah, so the example that Beverly just gave was using the, the, the uh, land use cover, so the use is, is a pavement, 
Uh, this, this example uses a combination of the, the use and the land cover. So, you know, with the increase in the number of uh, electric vehicles uh, in the UK, there's a demand for uh, charging points, as you, as you may imagine. You know, and there are some in public areas, you know, supermarkets, gyms, multi-storey car parks and the likes. But there are a number of projects uh, to, uh, you know, increase the number of uh, available charging locations. And then one initiative is to identify homes with uh, off-street parking, off parking and to target them for uh, electronic, uh, electric vehicle uh, point installations, charging point installations. So here we've used, uh, in the image, we've used a UK map land cover to identify front gardens that are paved over or with sufficient space and access uh, for car parking. So in the image, the, the area highlighted red has been identified as a man-made surface in the front of a, uh, a residential premises. And the attributes down the side, right hand side there uh, show um, the, those, those features that we were able to, to target. Uh, being London, you know, off street parking is, or oh, sorry, on street parking is highly regulated and a targeted approach to um, identifying uh, possible charging point locations made best use of the resources available. So um, London authorities uh, also look to evaluate how their citizens are housed. Um, again, during the, the current crisis, they wanted to understand how many were actually in temporary accommodation and what uh, the, the availability of the housing stock was. Um, from there, our data can be used to analyse and identify areas where additional um, or modular buildings could be placed and that would then help ease the pressure on housing in an area. And with UK map, areas can be assessed for different attributes. So for example, the number and location of different types of premises, um, how many residential properties are within a school catchment area, um, or the number of amenities currently in the area. So um, attributes in this example here, uh, you can see are coloured according to the high level usage um, and actually show different types of buildings, so demonstrating the difference between residential, retail, industrial. Uh, you have the road layouts, the details, so things like bus stops and pavements and hashed areas, uh, as well as individual and groups of trees. So moving on from uh, UK map to UK buildings, so UK Buildings is a unique uh, national database of building characteristics. It's created and maintained by us here at Jomney uh, to provide a consistent view of uh, buildings uh, across Great Britain and uh, parts of Northern Ireland or Belfast in Northern Ireland. There are two elements to the UK Buildings database. The first is uh, spatial information. So information about the building footprint, its size, its shape, its location and height. And then secondly, um, uh, attributes about each specific building. So the use and age of that building, for example. So if we go back to the, the image that Beverly showed right at the very beginning, the dark image with the buildings on, that, that is only the buildings in Great Britain. There's no, no background map there. That's all of the buildings, 30 odd million buildings that we have uh, information on in, uh, in um, Great Britain. So um, as you can see here, I've put uh, the information that we have in the data here. So we can tell you about the age, so whether it's a historic building, whether it's interwar uh, or more modern or even a temporary building. And uh, we can also provide the building footprint and the heights as well as uh, how it's used. Um, this is actually a simpler subset of the full database um, available direct from John UK, but um, there actually is a fee to obtain that, even if it would be for academic usage, 
but obviously through the Digimap portal, then that's freely available to the institutions who've signed up to the service. Yeah, so we can carry out an, a number of uh, uh, analysis tasks using the UK building data. Uh, th this example starts off using the uh, uh, height information about a building. You know, analyzing tall buildings in an area is extremely important for organizations like utility companies or emergency services. You know, knowing where the tall buildings are can help water companies regulate the water pressure uh, in a required area. Fire and police authorities need to understand the location of tall buildings for their risk assessments and emergency plannings. So in the example, in this example, you know, we've colored the buildings depending on their height. Uh, and so we can very quickly and easily uh, visually identify where the tall buildings are located. And then by uh, adding additional layers of information, further analysis can be carried out. And, and in this example, we've, uh, if you could click on Bev, right. we can, uh, we've added uh, the location of green spaces. You know, it's long been known that uh, good quality natural landscapes in urban areas can affect how people feel. It reduces stress and sadness, lifts the mood, makes us just, just generally makes us feel better to get out in, you know, in the park or play on the swings, if, you know, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And benefits include, you know, better air quality, less noise pollution, reduced risks from flooding and heat waves, for example. You know, so here, uh, the distance to the green space is, is calculated for the residents of the tall flats. You know, how far do they have to go to access some of these resources? And again, this enables uh, uh, resources to be targeted appropriately to make sure those without the benefit of, of these resources can, can get the help they need. So um, heating has um, been identified as the UK's biggest source of carbon emissions. And to actually achieve the government's net zero target by 2050, it's extremely important to start to reduce the amount of energy needed to actually heat our homes. And according to the NG Systems Catapult, heating accounts for around 37% of uh, the UK's carbon emissions with around 14% of that coming from heating and cooling domestic properties. So UK Buildings um, has been used to understand um, relevant features, so things like its age, its structure, uh, and other information that helps to determine um, what type of energy, efficient, energy efficiency measures uh, can be implemented. So for example, the, the older properties could benefit from cavity wall or loft insulation, while uh, newer properties or properties around 20 years old could benefit from actually having uh, their boiler replaced with a more energy efficient one. And large properties uh, with um, southerly uh, facing roofs could employ solar panels. Uh, different types of properties can be uh, easily located using the UK buildings data. And this example you see on the screen, um, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see that uh, this is displaying the ages of the residential buildings by color coloring them up uh, in the age bands. And then on the right is a typical output uh, from the energy system catapults uh, network model, uh, energy path network, and, uh, and shows uh, the range of analysis that can be done on domestic properties and their heating methods and how, if they change them, how they can affect the actual carbon emissions across the area. Um, analyzing the location and types of retail in an area is also important. Um, UK Buildings has been used to evaluate not only high streets, but villages, towns, and larger areas. Understanding how buildings are used has been useful for many projects. And uh, in the recent pandemic, again, local authorities have been looking um, at ways of understanding the distribution of retail across their area and um, being able to uh, use appropriate social distancing measures outside them or actually helping them to open up uh, once the restrictions allow uh, has been very useful. 
developers, architects or urban designers can evaluate the current infrastructure that surrounds their development site that they're looking at and um, really plan their site uh, to make it uh, a good fit for the area. So you can do this on a, a building or street level or up to a ward or authority area or beyond. And um, for an example uh, recently where a company was looking to, to do a new retail site, they were looking to develop it and, uh, and they wanted to obviously ensure the best use of their facilities. Initially, they planned for just an office and retail area, but by evaluating what else was surrounding them, they realised that there were already a lot of offices. So in order to ensure the retail units had um, better 24-7 footfall uh, and a, a good um, steady local custom base, they included some residential flats into the development. And so making sure that um, the retail was going to be more attractive to potential retailers. In this example here, you can see how the data has been coloured up and labelled according to building usage. So you can pull out all the residential areas or residential buildings and uh, those that have retail on the bottom or office and residential above. Uh, so it also pulls out mixed use properties um, and those that are office only, for example. Yeah, so the, the third uh, data set available on uh, Digimap is, uh, is UK land. It's a, a land use uh, data set covering uh, the United Kingdom and the border regions of France, Belgium and Ireland. I'd like to emphasise that this is a land use data set, not land cover. Uh, the distinction can sometimes you know, be pretty small, you know, in rural areas, Coniferous woodland is a pretty good description for both land use and land cover. But, you know, in, in more urban areas, it's definitely use that we're, we're providing rather than cover. If you want to identify where all the retail parks are, you don't need land cover. You need to know what, the, what an area is used for. So providing, uh, uh, UK land provides a consistent view of that uh, land use across the United Kingdom. And it's used on a, a range of projects, you know, large infrastructure projects, you know, Crossrail 2 or um, Heathrow uh, runway extensions, those types of projects, you know, where you're trying to identify what, what type of areas are gonna be impacted by, by a project. Uh, regional planning, risk assessment, size assessments, you know, or, or telecoms network planning, for example, all use this type of data. So when you want to know what an area of land is used for, UK land can provide that information. So what are the types of things that we can do with this data? The area that you're seeing here um, is for the Stafford area, and it's been colorized using our standard palette. So to, you can easily differentiate between the 27 different classes. And uh, one of our local authority customers wanted um, to actually have an official record of the different types of land use, so they could calculate the percentage of cover across their area, and then also be able to track this over, over time. So they wanted to be able to chart, say in five years time, how it was different and whether there was more or less of um, either agricultural or urban areas uh, in their area. Um, I mean, using the database, you can easily identify lots of different areas. So in this particular example, I've pulled out uh, mining and spoil areas and I've highlighted those in red for you. And um, these can be analyzed by their location um, and their surroundings or actually um, identify areas that might require a more detailed or on-site study. So the, the importance of uh, understanding land use for planning has sort of long, long been recognised, you know, and one of our customers uh, wanted to locate all the business and retail parks in their area of interest. And our, our land, land use classification made this very simple for them. So uh, here, the areas highlighted in red are the, are the business parks, and if we drill down to the uh, individual town, we can we can see the distribution within the town 
where we can carry out further analysis if we want to. So we've we've identified the retail and business parks, but now we want to run, do a, a little bit of additional analysis. And here, the uh, uh, those picked out in yellow are meeting the specific requirements. In this case, they had some um, restrictions based around distance to to uh, other other features and attributes. So the retail parks within specific distance of some other feature is what they were trying to identify and it was very quick and, and rapid analysis using uh, UK land uh, land use classifications. So um, that was a very quick whistle stop tour of all of the data um, hopefully that gives you um, a, a good overview of the information available and the variety of data that's that they offer. Um, so obviously uh, providing uh, information for London, there's um, the very detailed multifaceted database, UK map, which has uh, information, uh, detailed building footprints and ground for above ground floor information and uh, land use detail with um, UK buildings providing uh, the, the national view of the building characteristics their age um, and also UK land, as we've mentioned, providing the land usage uh, across the country. Um, so a, a copy of this presentation is going to be available to, to everyone. And um, as I move on, we have got uh, a number of links that uh, you might find of interest, uh, a couple of different um, case studies on how our data has been used and some information from ourselves in our blog uh, and the events and webinars that we're at um, and uh, hopefully there's been a few questions <laughs> or hopefully there hasn't right. <laughs> but so there should be Beverly, sorry if I can if I can just add to your to your summary really uh, mm -hmm. I, think, I think the main point to get across is if you want to know what something is used for one of our data sets will be able to help you whether that's at a national scale or down at the individual building or building floor level depending on on your area of interest so if you want to know what something's used for we can help you and then we have some additional information about buildings in terms of size and, and age and the likes but uh, usage is is the key theme that runs through all three products Lovely. Thank you very much, Beverly and Anthony. That was very interesting. I appreciate there's a lot of data there, a lot of detailed stuff to get your head around. It's, it's obviously worth having a much closer look at it and exploring it, but that was a really, really useful um, delve into some of the, 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 the details, which was great. Uh, we do have some questions if you're happy to take them just now. Uh, I'll start from the beginning, if that's okay. They're all in the chat if you want to read them. Um, Paul asks, uh, is the topography of the land mapped to include the building heights, et cetera, or is the data based on 2D maps rather than 3D data? So I can, I can take that one. So the, the, the building footprints are uh, 2D data and with the height as, a, as an attribute of that building polygon. So you can extrude the building footprint to the height to create a 3D block model. And that, that's quite a common use of our data uh, to build a um, entry level, I should, should we say, a block model, 3D block model using our footprints and, and, and height data. Okay. Anthony, can I add to the question a little? Um, and how how do you calculate those heights? I, I know you do the extrusion, but have the do the heights are they do they take into account the fact that a building's on the top of a hill, or are they are they done from <coughs> aerial photography or how, how? Yeah, so we do use uh, aerial photography or, or lidar more typically nowadays uh, to calculate the height. Um, complex yeah so uh, we try to take uh, you know the the roof the roof and the adjacent uh, terrain terrain height to calculate the height of the building yeah so it's done on the height of the building it doesn't take it's not done as height above sea level or anything like that no, so if it, but you can of course uh, overlay it on a, a, a terrain model 
So for, for London, we do have that, but there are terrain models available, uh, open data, or from Ordnance Survey on, on which you can put our footprints and, and our heights on, on top of the terrain, if you yeah. want to know above, uh, high above sea levels. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, okay, next next question. Um, you mentioned trees, this is from Matt. Um, you've mentioned trees, is it just tree or are there as, uh, as a more specific species information about them? It's literally just the location of trees. So okay. within UK map, we have um, several different um, areas. So we have uh, on um, overlay layer, um, it has the location of individual trees. Um, and then on the base map, it does have either scattered trees or uh, dense trees, but it doesn't have anything more about uh, the, the type of tree it is than that. Um, so the, the UK land classification does have a, a deciduous coniferous differentiation for the, for the uh, uh, woodland, the two types of um, woodland uh, uh, tree um, land use cover, but, that, but that's as detailed as, as we go on. Uh, okay. Trees. Great, thank you. Uh, Matt, I hope that answers the question for you. Uh, next question from Trish. Um, land use as well as land cover in the UK are changing continuously. Having that in mind, how often are your databases uh, updated to reflect these changes? So there are new editions published twice a year. Um, and obviously not every single piece of information is updated every time. But um, depending on which product it is and which feature it is, um, that will get refreshed over time. So, for example, when we fly um, or obtain new aerial photography uh, for London, we update the building footprints. And so if there's a new building or new estate being built, then additional information will be put into that. Um, and then obviously the usage will be put in too, um, but it, it will vary um, on the refresh rates depending on the product and which particular part of the, the data is being updated. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, another question from Judith. Uh, do you have any plans to expand UK map to beyond London? Are you looking to cover other cities in the UK? Okay, so um, we have just expanded it from Greater London to the M25. So uh, we have um, expanded the coverage. Um, we are, we are, there are some changes in the wider geospatial world that, that may impact on how uh, UK map develops, I think it's fair to say. Um, any expansion, you know, we've talked about should we do Birmingham or something like that, or, or perhaps Edinburgh, maybe more appropriate for some of the audience here today. Um, but it has to be customer would have to be customer driven, I think. Yeah. So, uh, not in the short term. Um, there may be some developments in the medium term, but they wouldn't be exactly as UK map is now, but it may, it may include some of the attribution, but presented in a different way. So a question of watch this space maybe. Yeah, there may be ways for us to expand the coverage in a different way to what we've done it up until now. But yeah. in, in the short term, no. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, next question is from Claudia. Uh, what's the scale of your data? You mentioned aerial imagery and what was the spatial resolution? So the aerial photography within uh, EK map um, currently is uh, 10 centimetre resolution. And that was captured in 2016. There's recently been an update, so that will be added in there. Um, so yeah, that'll be updated. Lovely, thank you. A uh, question from Steve. Is UK map uh, based on a standard data model that is available for others to use or is it all proprietary? I'm not quite sure I, I understand the question. Um, mm. there, there is, we try for the land use, for the land cover, we try to use the national uh, standard classifications, but things like the points of interest and the land use 
I think some of that is proprietary. It is, it is all documented and it's, it is all accessible to, to all users. Um, we do incorporate some, or we do now incorporate some um, open identifiers like uh, UPRNs, unique property reference numbers and unique street reference numbers, which do enable linking our data to other third part or make linking our data to other third party data sets uh, much more straightforward. You know, you don't have to rely on a spatial join, for example, you can do a database join. Yeah. Um, okay. If you'd like to expand on his question a little bit, I'm, I hope that's answered his question. Yes. All of the structure is available. Some of it is based on national standards and, and it does incorporate some uh, standard identifiers. But it okay. is, overall, I guess it, it's a proprietary database just because just of the volume of data that's included. Yeah, okay. Steve, if that doesn't answer your question, you could um, drop us an email to expand a little bit and we'll see if we can find a, a, a broader answer for you. Um, next question. Let me see if I can get this right. To minimise some potential risk, landscape to fragile bedrock, is it possible to add a layer to show a level of risk in different districts? I'm not sure that I understand that question either. Um, I think if you download the data, you can obviously add or underlay other layers of information. Um, yes. We don't have that in our data at the moment, but it, uh, as I say, if you download it, you can actually overlay and interact and uh, evaluate the area. Yes, I, I, I think that's that's how I would understand that question too, Beverly. That um, yes, you can take this the, the Germany data and overlay other data sources with it if if you can find them from other places yes uh, a question from richard here can the database be used to generate percentages of use types within a given geographic area yes <laughs> sure, <I'm sorry. laughs> I, I, yes i think that's right yes your classifications are clearly such that you could just gather them all together and count them can't you <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah the, the query in gis is, is pretty straightforward so, yeah. so just to expand a, a, a little bit, if we've got time, uh -huh. the, the, the main the main issue we have when talking to customers is is making sure that what we're talking about and what they're talking about is the same thing. Yes. Um, e even with buildings, you know, what, what is a building? You know, <laughs> we start. I start much many of my conversations with making sure we agree on what a building is. Yes, I or can imagine. Simple, simple things like that can make all the difference further yeah. down the line, can't they? So, so yes, um, you can. We can within the data. There's a structure there to for you to calculate percentages. Just, just take a little moment to think about what it is you actually want, because <laughs> you'll get a much better answer. That, that's I, good I advice. That applies, that always applies. <laughs> No, that, that sounds very sound advice. Um, okay, I think I think that's all the questions we've got now. Um, Viv, I think we've got a few minutes if you'd like to do a demonstration, unless Beverly and Anthony, there's anything else you'd like to add at this stage? Well, other than to say thank you. Yes, thank you <laughs> for everybody. To thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for joining us. These things are, are very valuable. We, we do appreciate your time. Right, Viv's going to give us a, a very quick demonstration of, of the data in action in Digimap. Yeah, hopefully um, everyone can see the Digimap um, homepage yeah. now. Yeah, can that's I'll just get you to confirm that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anthony and Beverly. Um, that was really interesting. So I'm just going to give a very quick um, overview of how you view and access the data within Digimap. So I've selected Geomni and on the right hand side here, you should be able to see three buttons. Geomni Roam, which allows you to browse and view um, the maps from Geomni. Uh, you can then print them, uh, generate a print or save the map within our, our service. If you want the actual data to go away and use in GIS, CAD or uh, any other software application, you come to Data Download where you can select your area and uh, specify the particular data sets that you want. We also have web services. Um, so this provides you, I'm going to click on that one, this provides you with a URL which you can then uh, copy and paste into your own 
uh, GIS application, for example, and um, view the, the maps within it. Um, you would still have to authenticate. You know, this is licensed data that we license from Geomni, so you would still have to input your um, Digimap username and password in order to be able to access that data. So let's have a quick look at Geomni Roam. Um, as Digimap users, hopefully you've used one of our Roam clients before, perhaps not the Geomni one. Um, but there are various features and functions available. I'm not going to go through all of them and give you a blow by blow account, um, but I'll just point out a few which are useful when you're looking at the Geomni data. So when I open Geomni Roam, um, what it's showing me, I've clicked on map information in the left here, is the UK land um, product that I'm looking at. So this is one that Anthony was explaining, gives us the land use. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in to Greater London area, just so we can get a flavour um, of all the, the Geomni products. So at this point, I'm still viewing UK land. And what I can do is open a map key um, in the sidebar on the left. So this map key um, tells me, give, shows me the legend, um, all the different palette of colors for the different land use types. Now we also offer um, an information tool on the top toolbar here. So if I click on that to activate it, let's zoom in a little bit further and I click on a polygon, for example, one of these red ones. It um, gives me the attribute information from the UK land database. So this is telling me that this particular polygon is high density residential with retail and commercial sites. So this is the UK land. But if I open up, up this base maps button um, on the, the map window here, it shows me the other maps, the other mapping products that I can flip between. So I could for example, select the UK building site and um, the age, the age one. So let's zoom in a little bit further. OK, so this particular area, I'm in Holborn here, and um, you can see hopefully the legend on the left gives you the, the age categorization into war, for example. Again, I'll just select one. So it gives me all of these attributes from the information and it tells me this is a classified as modern, this particular building. Um, so now my base maps has changed a little bit. As I zoomed a little bit further into London, um, I'm able to select between UK buildings age or UK buildings use. And as I select use, again, my legend changes and I can just try out one of this purple one. So this is a community religious use and the age of it is historic. But there's also a couple of maps have come up from the UK map, the, the, the mapping product that's available within um, the M25 have come up. So this base product has come up here. And in this one, the legend is um, separated into four different sections. Um, buildings and structures, for example, with a classification of those uh, surfaces, water areas and so on. And the aerial imagery is also available there too. So just a tip as you zoom in and out, check the base maps and see what's available um, for you to view at that particular scale. And um, the last tool I'm going to show you in Rome is the two up view. So this has divided my um, map window into two different areas. So what I can do is compare two base maps. So I can compare the aerial imagery with the UK buildings age layer on the other side, for example. So those I think are um, Emma, feel free to jump in if there's anything else you think is worthwhile pointing out. But I think those are the, the features which are most valuable to look at when you're looking at the, the Geomni data within our, our Roam application. So I'll very quickly now come out of here and show you Geomni data download. The data download is a stepped process. Um, so rather than viewing the maps, you are um, really selecting your study area and getting the data that you need for that. So let's try, for example, uh, Croydon. And then this map is really just to allow me to identify my area of interest. So I'm going to zoom right in and select this area here. But before I move on from this step, I, before I select the data, I have to show you, I have to tell you what area I want. So select area of interest, there's a range of tools. The most simple one is to draw a rectangle. So I will just do that on the map. 
There's lots of ways to do it there. You could import um, a selection of polygons. You might have a national grid tile name or coordinates, um, but that's the gist of it. You have to have a, an area selected on the map. And the next stage is to select the products. So we've divided these into national coverage or the UK map, London only products. Um, so if I want UK buildings, I simply check the box for that. If I would like the aerial imagery, um, I can select the box, check the box for that one as well. So you just work your way through the products, choosing the ones that you require. Then you select add to basket. And once your basket pops open, I'm sorry, this text is probably a little bit titchy on your screens. This is where you have some options. So Beverly mentioned that um, the data is produced twice a year. So you can uh, choose the particular version of the data that you wish. So I'll go for February last year. And um, then some of the products will have a format selection. So for the UK buildings data set, we provide it in three formats, Geo database, geo package or shape. Um, so it's dependent obviously on the software you're using, which is best for your requirements. So I'll select shape. And then it's just a matter of clicking request download and you get a confirmation email from Digimap and then a second email to say that your data is ready and here's the link to go and download it. So that was a very quick run through <clears throat> of the Digimap applications. Um, so I'll leave the screen here if anyone has anything they'd like me to show them again or either Anthony, Beverly or Emma has anything they want us to review, then go for it. If the only other thing I would highlight is if you go into Rome, yeah. you can find the area you're interested in and then you can hit the little cloud button that goes straight to the download and selects the area you've already, you're have already already looking at. I think that's quite a useful feature that maybe some people miss. Yeah, definitely. If you zoom in on that area there. Um, we have a question here. Will Rome only show the most recent data? Yes, I think that is correct, Judith. We, we, we can't put every version of every data set into into Rome because the mapping takes up a huge amount of effort to, to get it to display properly so we tend to only do the latest version for um, for viewing on the maps but the previous versions will always be available for data download. <clears throat> I just opened up map information because I thought we might have the the date of uh, publication in there but we don't but we do have that in the data download. Um, so yes yeah, so Emma's point um, was that there's this little arrow button on the top toolbar here. So if I select that, what it will do is open data download with that area already selected on screen. So if you identify your study area within Rome, you can then just uh, toggle that button to come into data download and that's your area selected. And then you, you just need, need to select, select your products, products and, and off you go. Yeah, I think that's quite useful. People often find, find the right space on the map. But then, of course, because the data download doesn't show you what the map looks like in the same way as Rome does, sometimes it can be a bit harder to identify exactly the same area. Yeah. Well, if we have no more questions, um, Beverly, Anthony, is there anything you'd like to add as a, a final say so? Um, I, from my point of view, um, if anybody thinks of anything afterwards, and obviously um, we're all um, available. Uh, to answer any questions that come up. Lovely, thank you. Yes, the same, same applies to our Adina help desk for anybody who, who has questions afterwards. Um, Viv, is there anything I need to say next? Over to you. Um, I don't think so. Just um, thanks to everyone for coming along. Huge thanks to the Geomni team for being here. And um, yeah, just to reiterate that um, I will send a recording, the transcript, and um, Beverly and Anthony's slides, um, hopefully tomorrow to everyone. Lovely, that's great. Thank you everyone for your time, especially to Anthony and Beverly for giving up their, their time to do this for this for us. It's been really, really helpful, very useful, and very interesting. Um, we'll round off for now. And if anybody has any questions, do drop us a line later.